Today I want to talk about how to um, use Fusion 360's CAM uh, support to adjust for kerf in a design meant to be cut on a laser cutter. So if you've seen my previous videos, you will uh, recognize this box as the box we did in the last video where I've got a finger jointed box, it's four walls and a bottom. And I want to be able to cut this on my Glowforge laser with kerf adjustment around all of the edges. Now, the first thing that I need to do is make sure that I've got support in Fusion 360 for DXF as the post processor. And there are a couple of other options as well, but for this demonstration, I'm going to use DXF. If you look in your projects list in Fusion 360, you will see this libraries um, tab or, or libraries section under your projects. If you go into this assets folder, you will see the cam posts folder. If you go in here, this gives you the ability to upload post processors into the Autodesk 360 cloud environment. And I have the DXF uh, post processor and there's a Glowforge post, post processor. And I've tried a number of different post processors here, uh, but the DXF one is the one we're gonna use. And I will put a link to where you can download this um, in the description for the video. If you don't already have this installed, once you download it, you're in this assets folder in the cam post folder, just go to upload and then you can drag and drop the file here and it will upload it to the cloud. Once the file is in the cloud and we can close this out now, we need to go into the cam software. Now this or the cam section, this is, um, going to take advantage of laser functionality or laser cutting support that has been added to Fusion 360 over the last year. Um, so if you've never tried this, this may be slightly new to you. If you're familiar with using a CNC, you will be familiar with uh, configuring different setups for your machine. So what I do, instead of having to lay out all of these pieces um, in, in a flat pattern, what I do is I will just create a setup here. I'll do a new setup. The default is for the setup to use model orientation, which means that whichever axis is the up axis is the default. Um, so I will keep this for the first setup. And I will rename this setup. So I will make this top down. And then if you've not used the cam um, module for your laser cutter, you may not have seen this before, but uh, last year sometime they added this uh, ability to support laser cutters. I believe it was last year. So we'll go up to this cutting section. We'll select the bottom panel and make sure that it's completely highlighted uh, so that we're selecting the whole profile. That's very important if this panel had some holes in it that you needed to cut out. Uh, we'll make sure that all loops are set up here, which again is very important if the panel um, has holes in it. The side doesn't really matter. The heights don't matter. We will go to passes. Now this is critical. The compensation type here, this determines how the software will adjust for curve because the Glowforge or, or because the laser cutter is not receiving G code that a traditional CNC would receive. The fusion 360 cannot rely on the, the platform to adjust for curve. So you cannot use this in control compensation type. If you use this, what you will find when you go through this process is that your DXF will be empty. So we need to make sure we change this compensation type to in computer, which means 
Fusion 360 is going to figure out the compensation for us and include that in the profile once we export it. Then under this linking tab, I turn off the lead in and lead out. I'm honestly not 100% sure if they have any impact here, but I turn them off anyway. And then we need to go into the tool and we need to select a tool. Now what I do is if I go into my local library, I actually go in and create a new tool. So we'll do that. Uh, in type, we want to make sure that this is set to laser cutter. Under the kerf width, this is the kerf that your um, that your laser is leaving in the material that you're cutting. So this is specific to your laser, your power, uh, and the material that you are using. So let's say I'm going to do 0 0.08 millimeters as the kerf. The holder doesn't matter in this case. This, the feeds and speeds don't matter since we're not using a CNC. And the post-processor doesn't matter. If we go under general, then you can just, what I do is put a, um, a description in here so that I know what these curve settings are. Um, And that's just so that when I see it in this dialog, I can easily pick out the kerf that is most appropriate for the material that I'm using. So ignore the kerfs that I have in here. A lot of these are just playing around with um, different settings, so most of them are not correct at the moment. I'm going through and cleaning all of that up. But let's stick with this 0 0.08 millimeter here for the proof grade medium draft board. I will hit OK, and that is the tool that will be used by the CAM post-processor. So that what that means is that Fusion 360 will automatically offset both X, uh, outside and inside cuts to account for that curve. So we will hit OK, and that gives us the profile for this bottom panel, and we can see the blue lines that show uh, how this is going to cut based on that panel. Now you can rename this uh, this if you want. I, I don't usually bother here, but you can rename that. Now we need two more setups, a minimum of two more setups. So I will do another setup here. And this time I need to change the orientation. So I'm gonna say select Z axis here. And then all I need to do is click on this front face. And that means that the next cut that I define is going to be oriented around this face. So it will actually look like it's cutting up and down with that face as the, as the um, shape that's going to be cut. So I will do this front to back. And then I will set another cutting profile here. I don't have to select another tool. I can if I want, but by default, it's going to use the same tool that I'd already selected. The contour I need to select, so I will, again, highlight this front panel, make sure that that's selected, Then I will go under the passes here and make sure compensation type is set to in-computer, and I will turn off the lead-in and lead-out settings. Now, this is, theoretically, I could use that and just duplicate that panel uh, once I do the export because the front and the back panels are exactly the same. But assume these two panels are not the same. If I wanted to cut this back panel, again, I could cut same thing, uh, define a new 2D profile just by clicking on the cutting icon, select the back panel face, go through, change the compensation type to in computer, and turn off the lead in and lead out. And now I've got the cut for my back panel. Now, another thing to point out is when I'm doing it this way, the top, so if I'm in my laser, 
the top of the material is going to be the the top based on the z-axis. So when I showed you this setup, the z-axis is on this side. So the laser, this this face is going to be the top of the material. On the back panel, this face is going to be the top of the material. So you need to keep in mind that if your jobs, it, let's say you're engraving something on both sides of these panels, you need to make sure that it's oriented correctly for the job that you're doing. But for a simple box like this, it doesn't matter the orientation, so I can use a, a single setup. If for some reason I needed to have a job where this the back of this back panel was the top of the material, I could create a new setup here and again change the modeling orientation with the z-axis on the back panel and this would be back to front. So now I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm not going to set up another cut there because I don't need it, but now let's set up a um, another one with the orientation off of the left panel. And again, we'll set up another cut. Our tool is already set. We'll select our contour. We'll go into passes, change the compensation type to in computer, and then into the linking and turn off the lead in and lead out. And this will be left, left to right. And <clears throat> let's fix that. And I don't need to set up another profile here on the right, but I will. I'll change the modeling orientation, select Z axis, and select the outside face of my right panel. And this is right to left. And then I will set up another cutting job with this right outside of the right panel as my profile. Change the compensation type and change or turn off the lead in and lead out. Now let's say I needed the back panel to be on the other side. Then I could actually just take this this job, this back panel cut, and drag it to the back to front job. Notice there's a red exclamation here. I'll just hit Command G or, or Control G to calculate the updated path, or I could right click on it and say generate toolpath, and that will fix that. Now the nice thing here is that if I go back into my model, and let's say this box is too big, and I want to change this to a smaller size, I'll go back to 150 on the length, and I will go to 75 on the width. If I go now, go notice all of my fingers have, have readjusted here. If I go back to my cam settings, and I just notice a mistake in my model, so I'll have to fix that. But if I go back to my cam settings, notice all of these jobs now have red exclamation points. I can just go up to this root setups folder and hit Command G or Control G and recalculate them all, and they're all done. Now, all I need to do is right click on the setups folder, select post process. You'll get this warning that multiple setups have been selected because they have different uh, orientations and on a CNC you could crash your machine if you tried to run a job with multiple orientations, but that doesn't matter here. So we'll click OK and make sure that in the post processes, because we installed the AutoCAD DXF, in the cloud, we need to make sure that this source is set to my cloud posts and make sure that the post processor is AutoCAD DXF. The program number here doesn't really matter, but you could type in the name and then go into the properties. The critical properties here are only 2D and only cutting because we can't do anything else. Um, so this will help prevent you from accidentally uh, adding a job that has an operation other than 2D cutting. 
And then even the most critical is this option for put operations in separate layers. And what this means is that within the DXF file, all five of these profile jobs will be in separate layers that you can then manipulate individually in something like Illustrator, which I will show in the next video. So we'll hit OK. This will ask for uh, the name of the file that you want to save it as and where you want to save it to. So I'll just save it to the current folder. Because I put a comment in where that program number was, it uses that as the default file name. I save that and I'm done. I now have a DXF file that has all five of these jobs in them in separate layers that I can bring into Illustrator and then eventually back into the Glowforge. Now let's say that I've made changes to this, uh, this job. I'm going to cut with different settings or with different material and I need to have a different kerf. I can go up to the manage toolbar, go into the tool library, and you'll see under the libraries you'll find the documents that you have open, and I only have one open right now. You'll find the tool that you had already set up here. Now you can create a new tool, uh, at, but then you have to go back and modify all of these jobs to point to that new tool. You can just edit this tool and let's say I need this curve, I messed up the curve and I actually need it to be 0.13 instead of 0.08. It's going to tell me that the following operations use the tool but with different feeds or speeds, which is not exactly correct here, but do you want to override it? I say yes. And all of my jobs have now been set up to use that new tool, which means every one of these jobs is now going to use different curve compensation. I go up to the setups and hit command or control G to recalculate them all. And with that, I've got a completely different curve uh, defined on my job and I can go out and export the DXF for this. Now keep in mind when I did that, that it did not change these settings for the, the tool that I had set up in my local library, which is kind of your master library. It had only changed the setting for the tool in this specific job. So that's one way to adjust the job without messing with the master tool library that you can figure here. But it's that easy to adjust for Curve. So I hope you found this video useful. Feel free to leave feedback or criticisms in the comments below, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.